It's time for our spotlight on the tech sector and AI. For that, we welcome in Olivier Blanchards with us, Research Director, Devices, Auto and Policy at the Futurum Group. Thank you so much for being with us. So when we talk about AI, it was all the rage in 2023, and it certainly seems that way for 2024. But AI is one thing, and making money, the monetization of AI is another. Um, where do we stand on that? Are there certain companies that seem to be ahead, and why? Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, 2023 was sort of the opening of Pandora's box of AI and mm -hmm. showing all the capabilities, especially of generative AI. 2024 is going to be about capitalizing on implementations. And that's where you're going to start to see companies, whether it's in the cloud, the chip makers, uh, device makers as well, capitalize on the opportunity in different ways. And I think one way to think about it is the last year we've talked a lot about cloud-based AI. Uh, so it's data center, GPUs, CPUs, basically creating these services out in the cloud. What we're going to see this year is a shift or more of a mix of AI moving into the edge and AI moving onto devices as well. And what that's going to do is create a lot more opportunity because it's not just a cloud play anymore. It's a, it's a play for the silicon manufacturers. It's going to be a play for all the device OEMs. And you're going to start seeing AI show up more in phones and PCs. I think one of the, the big growth areas in 2024 is going to be the AI PC. And I think it's, it's truly an inflection point for the category. Uh, you're going to start seeing a lot of AI go into vehicles as well and more edge products. And then, of course, you've got huge growth in the cloud as well. Um, so the big winner there is going to be NVIDIA or continue to be NVIDIA. Yeah, they they kind of have yeah, the, the lion's share of the, the GPU market. But, uh, you know, AMD is coming out with some really good GPU alternatives as well, some of which uh, perform better even than, uh, than NVIDIA's H100. So it's going to be a, an, an interesting year to see how AMD manages to, uh, to edge out uh, NVIDIA a little bit. So we're seeing this shift, as you noted, the cloud, uh, GPU, CPU, data centers into devices, and maybe that's where the opportunity is, or autos and such. Um, so when we talk about monetization, what does that really mean? Um, you know, obviously we think about making money, but how will companies, you pick one, and give us an example, how will a company make money using AI? Right, well, oh, so a, a, a company that's using AI, not as opposed to creating products that, that or either. create services. I don't know. Okay, this so, is your conversation. <laughs> right, right. You tell us, I mean, right. where the growth is, you know? The growth is going to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So in the data center, obviously, it's uh, GPUs and CPUs, but GPUs especially are going to drive a lot of growth. The data center and the, the cloud providers, mm -hmm. so AWS, uh, Microsoft with Azure, yeah. and, and Google uh, are already seeing an uplift. I think uh, it just in the last quarter in Q4 alone, uh, Amazon's, I'm sorry, Microsoft's uh, Azure growth was 30% higher uh, because of AI. Right. So we're, we're seeing a, a demand for those types of services. On the device side and on the edge side, you know, the PC segment has been going through a slump for the last two years. Uh, it's coming back, but AI PCs are going to shift so many inference workloads onto the PCs and out of the cloud that it's actually going to be more economical for companies to buy AI PCs, and I think that's going to create a lot of drive for the PC comeback. Uh, so I think by the end of H2 2024, we're going to see the PC market reinvigorated by uh, the AI So PC people category. are going to want to buy those PCs yeah. that have that yeah. implementation of AI embedded in it. And then where does a name like Tesla fit into this story? <laughs> well, Tesla has been an AI company from the start, right? Yeah. So uh, on the one hand, yeah, they buy a lot of GPUs, they, they put AI in the cars, uh, but there's also a huge data um, play that, that doesn't get talked enough uh, with, with Tesla, which is basically that all of their vehicles collect data and analyze that data and improve its ADAS solutions. And all that happens mostly in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and so the inference workloads that are necessary for this are going to be accelerated uh, by the shift. And I think that, that Tesla kind of has a head start on everybody else, uh, on all the ADAS platforms. So I think that you might, you might see Tesla's ADAS systems improve significantly in the next year. When people talk about Tesla and what a disappointment it's been, you know, there was a lot of, it, it got hit hard in the, la in the last couple of weeks, but it's not just an auto company, right? It's, yeah. it's, you can't compare it. I know it has competition in the EV space, but is it really something different? 
in your eyes? Yeah, I think I think Tesla's always been different. Uh, first of all, everybody's trying to catch up to Tesla, so that's that's yeah. still the case. Even if Tesla doesn't always perform as well as as some investors would like. Right. Um, obviously, they had to slash their prices <laughs> several times last year to hold on to market share. That's that's dwindling, but their their sales have been super strong. I mean, they've had the the biggest quarter, I think, a record-setting quarter last year uh, in Q4. I don't think that we're going to see that kind of growth this year. I think they fired their magic bullet with, with the price cuts. There's nowhere else to go. But um, Tesla can grow in different areas. And, and one of them is obviously the charger network. Uh, they're also selling some of their hardware solutions to competitors to their own network now. Yeah. So Tesla's, Tesla's going to find areas of growth. Um, I just don't know that it's necessarily going to be, you know, the 35 to 38 percent growth in sales that they saw last quarter. Right. That was, um, you know, obviously had been growing so fast, it was slower growth. Uh, what happened to the metaverse? <laughs> I think the metaverse is on hold for a bit. Uh, and it's been good to, uh, to see Mark Zuckerberg sort of put that on the back burner a little bit and focus instead on creating the devices, creating the interface. Right. And I think one of the, the more interesting things to circle back to this AI play is that the, the magic interface, I think, for the XR category, which includes everything from AR all the way to VR, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, and, and includes smart glasses as well, is the voice interface, is the built-in on-device AI. Because you don't necessarily want to be tapping your glasses or, or doing gestures all the time. Sometimes you just need a very thin client on your face that doesn't weigh a lot, uh, whether it's smart glasses or AR glasses, mm. that you can talk to and you can tell them to do things. And I think that, that AI and voice interface is going to be key to mass adoption, especially in the lower tiers uh, for the, uh, the smart glasses and, uh, and AR glasses as well when they come out. Have you tried some of them? I mean, can yeah. you tell us about the level of coolness? I mean, your experience? You know, it's getting there. It's taking longer than I'd like. Um, I think Apple's Vision Pro is a, is a fantastic first shot at yeah, the product. Yeah, and it had a lot of demand and then all those pre-orders. A lot sure. of demand, a lot of pre-orders. I mean, it's still a niche product. It's extremely expensive. It's not yeah. for everybody and it's a first generation product. Yeah. But it's Apple, so you know that there's going to be a pull. Um, but I think I think the, the, the mass adoption is still going to be with AR and thinner glasses, things that you can wear all day that don't weigh a ton, uh, yeah. that have more battery autonomy and that allow you to actually do things that are more productive than just the, the entertainment. Yeah. Um, VR is nice, but I'd like to have glasses that help me shop, that help me work, that create more virtual desktops for me at work, uh, and that I can take with me everywhere I go, um, that utility to, uh, to my day. So AI investments, AI implementation, AI growth, it's all so exciting in all the ways that we're seeing these opportunities. On the other side of the coin, there are dangers. Um, and that is something that everyone focuses about. Um, any thoughts on that? In, in a big picture, sort of broad brush? Very broad brush. Any new technology comes with uh, a lot of goods and a lot of bads. Uh, so on the yeah. one hand, I think that, you know, the, some of the, the larger companies, tech companies are in DC today talking about how to keep kids safe online. Yeah. Um, obviously AI is creating a whole new slew of, of potential problems uh, with deep fakes and, and other types of uh, use cases. Sure. Um, so Good that's point. that's not necessarily something that has anything to do with the market itself. Uh, I think that's more about legislation and about the companies also taking uh, taking a stance on uh, on where they want to prevent certain use cases from happening. Um, right. But I think for for safety and security reasons. Um, AI on devices, not being in the cloud, is also going to help the enterprise and users keep uh, a lot of their data secure online while they're using AI applications. Um, and so I'd, I'd also look to, uh, to Qualcomm and its, uh, its ARM-based AI PCs that are going to be coming out in H2. Um, I think they're going, to be, uh, hmm. they're going to have something interesting to bring to the market. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, so that was a good teaser for the second half yeah. of the year for Qualcomm. Thank you for that, Olivier Blanchard of uh, the Futurum Group. A great conversation. I appreciate it very much. Thank you.